Hi guys, today I'm going to show how we can use the Fermic Pro app to expose the advanced features of an iPhone so that we can take videos like a pro without carrying a DSLR. As we all know, smartphone cameras are getting super powerful and 4K video recordings are possible in most of the latest smartphone devices out there. I personally own an iPhone and although the camera hardware is top notch, the advanced recording settings are actually not available in the native camera app. So there are a number of camera apps out there and Fermic Pro is probably one of the most popular app to take your mobile photography to the next level. The app costs about $14.99 to download on the App Store and it is probably one of the more expensive apps you'll see. Before clicking on the download button, you probably want to figure out if the app fits your needs. So let's get started. Once we start the Fermic Pro app, the video settings can be accessed from the usual gear icon. We'll first look at the resolution settings. The app allows us to record for different aspect ratios. We can choose from 2.59 to 1 for ultra wide screen effect or 1 to 1 if you are planning to post the video in Instagram. For now, I'll stick to the 16 to 9 aspect ratio. We can also select the video quality and Fermic Pro supports up to 4K 2160p. Now we'll select the video encoding bitrate. If we select Fermic Extreme, we can go up to 100 Mbps. But this also means the video will take up more storage space when you record. So next we will change the variable frame rates. In the frame rate settings, first we can choose between standard or time-lapse recording. In the standard recording, we can choose from 24 frames per second, which will give a more cinematic motion effect. Or we can choose a higher frame rate to play back in slow motion effect. So next we'll look at the audio settings. Here we can choose different audio encoding format. The available options are PCM for uncompressed audio encoding, AAC for compressed audio format, and AIFF is an Apple audio format. For audio sampling frequency, we'll stick to 48kHz which is the standard for DVD. Under device, we can select the option to save to camera roll, remote control, orientation lock and so on. These settings are up to your personal preferences so you can decide what fits best for you when you navigate. I choose not to automatically save to camera roll, instead I select the videos I want to download and then I download the raw video through iTunes in order to preserve the image quality. So for now, these are the key settings that we care about. We'll go ahead and save these settings as a preset, so that we can easily select these settings when we need them. I'll just name this as default, and I'll click save, and in future, we'll be able to call out these settings. In the iPhone's native camera app, we can only select the area to focus. In Fermic Pro, the focus and exposure tools are controlled separately, and there's a number of ways to adjust these settings. The easiest way is to adjust the two radical icons we see on the screen. The circle radical adjusts the exposure, and the square radical adjusts the focus. When you want to fix either of these settings, just click on the radical and it turns red. As you can see, once the focus is fixed, moving it around does not change anything. So the other way to adjust the focus and exposure is by clicking on the icon that looks like a wheel on the bottom left of the screen. Turning the slider on the left adjusts the exposure, which is determined by the ISO or image sensitivity on the top and shutter speed at the bottom. We can change the exposure progressively while firming and the speed can be determined by adjusting the pull speed slider on the left. On the right, we can control the zoom and focus effect of the camera lens. However, it is not advisable to use the camera's digital zoom as it will distort the image quality. Similar to the exposure feature, we can gradually shift the focus by tapping on the white bars and the speed can be adjusted by adjusting the pull speed slider. Under analytics, we can check our exposure settings. We can 
Also enable analytics by toggling the icon with an A. This will bring out a number of different overlays. Areas with red shades indicate over exposure and we can shift the exposure radical to correct this. There are other analytics overlays that we can use and the areas shaded in blue represent under exposure and we can make the necessary adjustments to correct this. Next, we will explore the features available under this color wheels icon. Another important feature of the Fermic Pro app is the ability to adjust the temperature and tint without having to do any post-processing. We can choose a more cold blue color or a warmer reddish color for the video before we start recording. And for an additional $9.99 in-app purchase, the cinematographer kit can be unlocked giving you access to even more advanced features. There are a number of gamma presets available. The natural, dynamic, flag and lock. This is an exciting update, particularly for the lock mode, which gives us a flat image, but it preserves the details to give us more freedom for color correction during post. I recorded some video samples using the different modes and this is how the videos look like. In the next video, I'll do some color correction on the flat and lock presets and let's see how they fare after doing some color grading. Next, I'll go through the remaining setting options in the gear icon. The CMS or content management system allow us to name the clips so that they're easier to work with during post-production. The hardware options allow us to connect the Filmic Pro to other hardware accessories. For me, I often use the DJI Osmo Mobile together with Filmic Pro, so that's why I have it turned on. Under Sync, you can connect to the cloud storage if you have one. Next, the community is basically Filmic Pro's social media platform, so I will go into them. In the Overview tab, you can look at all the key settings you have selected in one glance. In the camera mode, you can choose between wide lens mode for the widest field of view. The tele lens mode is a fixed 2 times lens, which is great for close-up shots. The zoom lens option uses Apple's latest optical zoom capability using the side dual lens available in iPhone 7 onwards. And lastly, the selfie mode switches the camera to the camera's front lens for selfie taking. The information tab provides information on the app's version number as well as some links to the quick guides and tutorials. Next, let's see how we can review the videos that we have taken. The recordings can be retrieved by clicking the play button and we, if we select one of the videos, we can actually do some basic post-production and color grading within the app. First, we can adjust the exposure. We can shift the slider and decide the effect that we want to achieve. We can change the contrast and I'll make it slightly higher. And next, we'll change the white balance that we want to achieve. Again, there's no right or wrong answer, but I'll just leave the white balance to its original point. And next, I'll change the saturation. I'll make it slightly higher and finally, the tint. With that, you can either reset the settings that you have made or if you are actually happy with the outcome, you can commit the changes made and save the video. Next, there are a number of options that we can transfer the images to. First, we'll just select the items and we can actually save or copy them to camera roll or we can select email or other social media platforms that we want to post the videos to. With this, I want to thank you for watching this video. If there's any questions or anything you want me to cover in the subsequent videos, please leave a comment below and I'll see you in the next video.